Welcome back, and today I have a bunch of new stuff to share with y'all. First up, we have one coming from Concept. This is the brand new Baku. This is a Greg, Greg Schaub design. Um, he is the man behind Sparrow Knives, and you probably have seen his designs before. He also designed the Concept Fenrir, one of my favorite concepts. Love his logo, too. Pretty darn cool. But this is uh, a very uh, different type of design, but they both have, you know, that aggressive point. Okey pokey. This one has like a Japanese style Tanto blade. Uh, it looks like a fat carbon, white fat carbon inlay right there. Inset liner lock, S35 VN steel. Beautifully done. Look at that tit middle titanium pocket clip is blind screwed, just meaning it's screwed from the inside so you don't have an extra screw there. Nice tie backspacer. It's a more medium sized knife. Um, it I get a good four finger grip on it. You know, it's, it's and I'm not cramped or anything. It's got a very snappy action. It's got it's got thumb studs and a flipper tab here. Nice flipping action. Thumb studs. I can reverse flick it, and I can thumb flick it. I just literally just opened this one up. I, I just got in from a trip with all my family, so um, I got have quite a few knives waiting for me to, uh, you know, review. And this is uh, one of the beauties. So this is just the first impressions. I'll do my full review after I've done my testing and uh, had enough time with each one of these knives. Let me know down in the comments which knife you'd like to see a review on first. And uh, if they have links to any of these knives, I will have them down in the description. So this is the first one, the Baku. Next up, we have the Jack Wolf Knives Pioneer Jack. Uh, this one just showed up as well. My particular one has uh, Arctic Storm Fat Carbon. Not a whole lot of blue coming through here, but I found that uh, the Fat Carbons, you know, you can get some that have a lot, some that are kind of like this where you just have a little bit of splotchy blue uh, splashes here and there, which is fine. I, if I'm going to get something that I prefer like this, I don't know what this is. I'm pretty sure this is not fat carbon. It might be camo carbon. I'm not sure. But these are very, very vibrant. You can see the difference. So I don't know. They could be the same material, but I, I don't think they are. It doesn't look anything like it. So let's get this one open. Now this one I noticed right off the back, it has the strongest pull out of all my Jack Wolves. It's not bad. Uh, and maybe it's because I can't pinch it as easy as I can the others. But just listen to this. Nice positive snap to it. It looks like it may be a straight back design. So it's going to give you, you can see you have a much more stout tip than you have on the rest of the Jack Wolf knives I've, I've reviewed on the channel. Still got it, you know, still ground decently thin back here, but it's definitely thickening up up here. So if you needed a heavier worker, so maybe... Uh, that's why this springs a little bit stronger. Definitely good looking knife. I love that swedge up top. S90 V steel. Just listen to this. Oof. Cool. Listen. Very nice. So that's the second one. The Jack Wolf Knives Pioneer Jack. Stay tuned. This one, I usually uh, try to drop my review of these the, either the day of the drop or the day before. Speaking of slip joints, I bought this one off of Amazon the other day. This is a brand new one coming from Real Steel. Uh, this is their Barlow. It's got G10 with like a full bolster up top. Very grippy. This texture right here is very, very grippy. And this one has my favorite Barlow blade, the drop point right here. I love, love that blade shape. Now, as you can see, it's not a half stop. It's a three-quarter stop. Decent engagement there. Not sure, quite sure how they did the construction of this because you got a body screw right here, but you don't see a pivot screw. So I don't know if this snaps in or what. I'll have to check it out after this video because um, I haven't had time to do it. It is a reversible wire pocket clip. As you can see, you have the notches there. N690 steel, if I didn't say that a little while ago. Got a nice little sharpening choil that eh, should give you a little bit of life. Yeah, it'll give you a little bit of life to sharpen up. 
I can get a four finger grip on it. And I, I kind of do like that three quarter because if this one had a half stop, no matter, it would be hard to, you know, do this stop. I usually, I like to like push it. I like to push it down like this. But if it had a half stop and I pushed it down like that, it'd probably smack into my fingers. And then I like to come back and do that. So pretty cool one. Uh, affordable. Centered up. And uh, supposedly they're going to be offering, I think, more scale options. So Because they're supposed to be very easy to swap the scales on these. So I'll have to see what, what that's all about and let you know in a full video. I'm coming from the Best Tech Man brand. This is the Best Tech Man good boy this is a keanu design um they have them i think nine coated as well d2 steel blue anodized thumb studs i went with the tiffany blue g10 because i have too many knives with black g10 i mean you know, like this one so i like to change it up whenever i can and blue is my favorite color inset pocket clip inset stainless steel liners button lock pretty sure this is the first button lock from the best tech man brand and you have a very uh, reinforced tip up there i don't know if you can actually see that with the coated but you definitely do and very very smooth action uh nice jumping up top crown spine i'm not sure when these will be released or i don't think they've been released yet uh, whenever I do find that out, I will probably do my full review. Depending on the price, hopefully they can keep this under the $60 price point. I would hope so, because that's what this whole part of this brand is about. Uh, and if they can do that, yeah, this one I could I could see it now. It's going to be one that I could probably recommend. Uh, but got to do the testing first. Got a pre-order that I've been waiting on, and it's coming from Indiana Knives. This is uh, the model EDZ. I pre-ordered this one, I think, sometime last year, and I, I thought it was cool, and I like the blade steel they went with on this one, so you have a basically uh, titanium, contour titanium frame, button lock, and as you can see, you have this roll around, kind of like a, kind of like a big lighter up here on the top, nice jimping, and you have the blade hole, so you can either come up top, and you have that beautiful beautiful blade there stone wash finish and these are in vanix vanix super clean it's a steel a nitrogen based steel that uh is very very corrosion resistant you're not going to really have to worry about it uh rusting on you and it, it it's a, a excellent edge holder as well line screwed mill titanium clip i don't know if they have any more of these uh available or not um, like I said, I did pre-order this one. You got a full flat grind. Now, I will say right off the back, it's got a very smooth action to it. I can do all the stuff, but the detent is kind of soft. Uh, I think these are made by Best Tech Forum. And it definitely, it's not a snappy action. That's what I can say. I mean, I can make it by preloading it. I can make it snappy. And I'm not usually one that wants a stronger detent, but on a button lock, I usually do like them a little bit stronger than this because the springs on button locks, they're always going to get weaker. And the more and more you use it and play with it, it's going to get weaker and weaker each time. So, you know, eventually this is going to get softer and that's just not going to be a good thing. So hopefully that's not the case. Um, I don't know. See... It's hard for me to manipulate it left-handed. Like, I can do it probably 50% of the time, but I have to make sure I catch it right, and um, I'm, I'm giving it a good flick because I can fail it. But, you know, still good enough to do all the stuff. Uh, I'm going to do a little testing with this one. I love the overall aesthetics of the knife. Um, it's, it's an attractive knife. The clip is a little bit stiff, but I think it's going to be just fine. This one's coming from Caval, Caval, Caval. Comes with, it comes with all, it's, you can tell it's, it's an experience with this knife. A silk, um, handkerchief they call it with a, like, Sagaha pattern on it. The packaging, you can tell it's, it's a higher end brand. Comes with this nice little thing, you even get like, 
you know, then I'll give you the little paper baggie. This one comes with the whole little plug of the desiccant stuff. And then you get like the, the little printout of the exploded view of the knife. You know, anytime they go this extra mile, you know it's a premium product, at least, you know, most of the time. Um, it's it's usually going to be over $200, I mean, at least what I've noticed. And you get some stickers, and you get a, a microfiber cloth, you get air freshener, white tea diamond, and just a uh, history and stuff and the other knives that they have. But I think the name of the knife is the Denka. Here's the knife. Now, it's an, it's an attractive knife. Now, it's a small knife. I'm going to give you some side references in a second. It's got this nice contour titanium. Thick slabs of titanium that have like a brush finish on them. Looks like a... Just a polished blue anodized pivot collar and then the decorative pivot right there. Some nice crisp hardware. And you get a nice pop of color from that Timascus thumb disc. Now, I haven't even got to open this one yet. Um, let's see. Oh, look at that. It's got some nice stepping here on both sides. Now, one thing that I noticed right off the back, and I, I guess I probably should look the pictures more, this one doesn't come with a pocket clip. Now, it is a smaller knife. I could put it in a fifth pocket, or I could put it in one of my EDC pouches, but something I did notice. So, here's the blade. You got a nice hollow ground blade here, M390 steel. You have a Timascus uh, backspacer that is absolutely stunning. It has a lanyard hole that's in there as well. Just look at that. Very, very good looking. Now this one has an inset liner lock. Very tight lock up. I can still get a four finger grip on it. Like I said, it is a smaller knife. It is comfortable. It has very good action. I can reverse flick it easily. And I can also thumb flick it easily. But just to give you a size reference, this is probably the best size reference I have. This is Spyderco Techno 2. Uh, here it is with the Civivi Baby Banter. So it's bigger than the Banter. It's, a, it's about the same exact size as the uh, Techno 2. Let's see, I got one more Spyderco, the Dragonfly. Let's see, so Dragonfly, it's about, it's a little bit bigger than Dragonfly. So not a big knife at all. We'll look at it. I'll do my testing, see how it performs. I know these aren't cheap knives. I don't know exactly what this one costs, but I know they're asking a pretty penny for it. So we'll have to see if uh, I think it's worth it after I do all that stuff. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. Let me know which one of these knives you would like to see a review on first. I have, you know dates that these uh, will drop on like say the Jack Wolf so this one will probably be on a certain date uh, but this one this one this one I don't know if I let me know if y'all want to see a full review on the uh, EDZ if y'all want to see a full review on it let me know uh, like I said I don't know if they have any more of these available I don't I didn't know if they bought more and they just got them on their site or not but if they don't I, don't, I hate reviewing something that you can't just go out and buy. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. I hope everybody's having an absolute amazing day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.